Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Air Force wants knockoff Iranian drones for target practice. X-37B space plane launches on eighth mission. And Army makes aggressive move to train its drone operators. And I'm your host, Holland Blake. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Air Force wants knockoff Iranian drones for target practice. The Air Force has put out a call to commission a one-to-one -one copy of the Iranian design Shahed-136. This is a low-cost attack drone that Russia has been using heavily against Ukraine and that the U.S. wants to know just how to take down. The request for information specifies that the drone must match the Shahed's form, fit, and function, though the government isn't providing any technical specifics. The point isn't to create a fully functioning Iranian weapon, but rather a realistic target that U.S. forces can use to improve defenses. The solicitation covers at least 16 drones with the option for 20 more. Each must support a payload of 70 to 100 pounds and fly at least 50 miles. Though the Shahed-136 costs somewhere between $20,000 and $50,000, interceptors used to stop them can run into the millions. That price imbalance has made the drones attractive to Iran, its proxies, and now Russia. Additionally, the drone's slow speed and small radar profile have proved difficult to counter with traditional air defense systems. These traits not only make them more annoying to get rid of, but also more challenging to train against without a decent stand-in. Defense firms are already circling the opportunity. For now, the plan is to send the replicas to Eglin Air Force Base in Florida for testing under the Armament Directorate. After the break, Embry-Riddle uses UAVs and AI for lake vegetation survey. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. Embry Riddle uses UAVs and AI for lake vegetation survey. Researchers at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University are collaborating with Stetson University's Institute of Water and Environmental Resilience using drones to capture aerial imagery of aquatic vegetation that will be used to train AI models to automatically classify plant life and examine the health of waterways, such as lakes, rivers, and other bodies of water. The project's UAVs are equipped with a variety of cameras and sensors to find and collect images of aquatic plants on the shoreline of Lake Beresford, just west of Deland, Florida. AV delivers P-550 Group 2 UASs for Army LRR. AeroVironment, developer of multi-domain intelligent robotic systems, announced the delivery of its P-550 Group 2 small UAS to the U.S. Army for its long-range reconnaissance program to support training and operations for the Army's Transformation in Contact Brigades initiative. This delivery consists of multiple P-550 systems with new equipment training and training of master trainers to ensure mission readiness and its rapid integration into Army brigades and other units. FAA warns of two-hour delays for Starship's Florida launch. SpaceX's plan to not only bring its Starship mega rocket to the Sunshine State, but also expand operations to 44 launches per year, could mean serious trouble for major airports and airlines. The FAA predicts average delays of up to two hours or longer. 
The agency confirmed that it expects to see average delays of up to two hours at major airports during launches, with re-entries causing delays of up to an hour. Depending on traffic levels, as many as 200 aircraft per hour could be affected during a launch, and up to 600 during a re-entry. Over 40 NASA missions chopped due to massive budget cuts. More than 40 space missions are being sacrificed to make up for budget cuts at NASA. Programs on the chopping block are not just future concepts. Many are spacecraft that have already been paid for and even launched. While the potential budget cuts have been public knowledge for months, NASA Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate Dr. Nikki Fox confirmed that the agency is getting ready to enact the changes. Scientists warned the shutdown would be nearly irreversible, requiring decades and billions to restore. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. X-37B space plane launches on 8th mission. The X-37B orbital test vehicle launched this past week, August 21st, on its 8th mission, lifting off at 11.50 p.m. Eastern aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The vehicle is now reported as healthy on orbit and proceeding with standard checkout. Less than six months after completing its seventh mission with a landing at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, on March 7th, the space plane is back in space. This mission includes an integrated service module to increase payload capacity for experimentation activities on orbit. The X-37B is hosting several technology demonstrations from government partners on this mission, including laser communications and a quantum inertial sensor designed to support navigation when GPS is unavailable. On its previous missions, the vehicle executed a first-of-its-kind aerobraking maneuver to change orbits while conserving propellant. The X-37B is a government industry partnership led by the U.S. Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, with the U.S. Space Force overseeing operations. The X-37B is a dynamic and responsive spacecraft responsible for conducting a range of tests and experiments that expedite the development of critical next-gen technologies and operational concepts for reusable space capabilities. Since its first flight in 2010, the orbital test vehicle has completed seven missions and accumulated more than 4,200 days in space, returning after each flight for inspection and augmentation. After these messages, Army makes aggressive move to train its drone operators. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Army makes aggressive move to train its drone operators. The U.S. Army is making an aggressive attempt to get up to speed in drone ops by launching its unmanned advanced lethality course. Soldiers will spend several weeks out at Fort Rucker to build flying skills and practice drone strike scenarios. The program spans over a month, beginning with three weeks of classroom instruction. Soldiers get 20 to 25 hours on commercial sims like Liftoff, Velocidrone, and Drone Racing League, essentially creating a video game type experience to ease the transition to real world flying. Once soldiers can successfully navigate a virtual drone, they move on to field exercises. Those scenarios cover urban combat scenarios including recon, surveillance, and target acquisition missions. Soldiers are then tasked with practicing one-way attack drone strikes using balloons as targets. This allows troops to simulate taking out enemies without blowing up the equipment the Army paid for. The training isn't just about flying. Soldiers are also taught to build and repair their drones using computer-aided design software and 3D printers. 28 soldiers from a mix of backgrounds, infantry, cavalry, and aviation are currently enrolled. Some come with hobbyist experience, other with prior certificates as master trainers. The course is known to use five drone systems from the Defense Department's blue UAS cleared list, though Army officials declined to identify which ones. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.